Derek, uh, the, it seems that the game plan for both the Broncos and the Jags is to start by taking him away first and then uh, and let, let the other parts of the offense try and beat you guys. What are the coaching points that you guys have taken away from these, these two games uh, for him, even though he's able to find success late in the game? Uh, really nothing. You know, it's, it's been – uh, artist does a great job of game planning. And as uh, we all know that we have a bunch of other guys on this team that are capable of uh, making plays for us. So, you know, it's one of those deals where Art calls the plays and Ryan takes what the defense gives us and, and gets us in the right plays. Um, and, and each individual guy does their, does their own part. Try Beauclair again. Uh, did that answer your question, Buck? I'm sorry. No, you're good, Coach. I, I just uh, waiting for Kim to set up the next one. I appreciate you. So polite. All right, yeah, Tony, I was, uh, I was curious. McNichols and, uh, and Perry both got a couple of carries on Sunday. Was that, uh, was that the plan to get them some work going in, or, or was that uh, more Derek just needed a, a quick breather a couple times? No, that was a uh, that was planned, you know, just to find an opportunity to give some other guys an opportunity to see what they can do. You know, those guys come to practice and they work hard every day. Uh, so, you know, like anything else, you want to reward those guys and give them an opportunity to see what they can do in those game time situations. Uh, and so certainly those guys went in and, and did a decent job for us and took advantage of the opportunities that they had. Neither one of them has had a lot of carries the the last few years. How, how important is that to to get them get them some work and and get them the feel of that again? Well, it's like anything else. It's it's trying to develop, continue to work and develop uh, depth. You know, uh, and obviously, if we can develop some depth at, at our position at the in, in the running back room, uh, obviously that helps the team and it and it gives uh, opponents other things to work on, other things to worry about. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, let me get a follow up here, Coach. Uh, on Darrington Evans, we have we obviously haven't seen him be available yet, and he's been uh, available at, in spurts at practice. How is how is he progressing right now in in the meeting rooms in what he is able to do? He, he, does, he does a great job. Uh, I mentioned it back during uh, August, when, uh, July, when we talked. Uh, Darrington's a, a, a very sharp guy picks things up very well mentally. Uh, so he's, he's, he's doing well in, in everything that he's allowed to do and what he's doing. He's, he's progressing just fine. Thanks, Coach. Coach, Derek was very quick to applaud his teammates for scoring on Sunday, uh, even though he himself has not scored yet. How indicative is that of his humbleness and his leadership? That kind of describes Derek to a T, you know, he's a very selfless individual, you know, uh, in life and, and in football. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's very genuine and, and he means it, you know, uh, just because those other guys that have been scoring, you know, when you think about uh, the receivers and tight ends, those guys uh, do a great job blocking uh, when, when they're not, when Derek's number is called. So whether he scores or he just, you know, where he has his regular, his regular runs, you know, and whether it be two yards, three yards, 10 yards, or long touchdown runs, those guys sacrifice and bust their butt and put their, uh, and doing, and doing their job um, so that he can score. So it's, it's great when he has an opportunity to help in a different way and some type of protection uh, and to see those guys uh, go out and, and, and show what they can do um, and, and the different skill sets that they have. And then any opportunity these guys get to get in, get to get in the end zone is, is certainly uh, great for the team. Rex Red. Yeah, Tony, I'm just wondering, just in the area of pass pro, you know, like with Darrington, how different, you know, how different has this offseason made it in terms of getting those reps in and getting a feel for, you know, how he is on blitz pickup and all that stuff? I mean, how do you feel about when he is, uh, healthy enough to go that he's going to be able to handle all that stuff that gets thrown at you in game situations? You know, until he gets out there, you know what I mean? It's, 
I, I don't mean to be rude, but I, I mean, it's really, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? And uh, I know what he does in practice, but until he gets in a, in a game, you know, without having an off season and all that, I, I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when he gets out there. And following up on that, how, like, obviously you guys try to replicate everything you can and you, you, you can't, but like, even just preseason games, you know, even though it's different opponents, different situations, it's not the same thing as a real game. How much of a difference maker is you know, having those reps in those games for a rookie, you know, going into a season? You know, in my experience with having, you know, uh, Dalk and, and a couple of the other guys that were young guys and rookies coming in, that, that those were, those were really good. I mean, obviously it's been done that way for a long time. Uh, so someone figured out long before I ever showed up that it's beneficial uh, for those guys to get those reps. So, um, and, and I think it was beneficial for some of the guys that we've had uh, each year here so far during the preseason to get those reps to, to, that have made it on this team or other teams in the NFL. So certainly those reps are valuable, um, but we, we, we got what we got and the times call for something different this year, so we just have to adapt and adjust. Thanks, Tony. Jim Wyatt. Hi, Tony. Appreciate your time. I, I guess I'm a follow up on Darren Tana. What, what, what are you, what are you doing with him now, just to make sure he's ready for when he is good physically, and how much you are you kind of motivating him just to how you stay in it? Your time's coming. Well, he's doing. He's in, in every meeting like everyone else, and he's doing whatever. Uh, the training staff allows him to do. So when he gets out there, we'll see what he can do. How's he handling, you know, wanting to play, but also being trying to be patient with the injury? Well, he's like he's like uh, every competitive kid, you know. Uh, he, he, he is chomping at the bit to get out there and get playing. Uh, and when he's ready to go, he'll be, re he'll, he'll be out there. And and one on Derek. I mean, he, I mean, he's used to heavy workloads, and he's done it throughout his career. The the start he's off to this year, where he's really teams really relied on him a lot. How does he handle that? And do you get the sense he he's perfectly content with twenty five? Derek is, you know, obviously he's he's uh, been been good and been durable uh, throughout his his playing career, high school, college. Uh, this far in the NFL. So Derek is, is he will do whatever the coaches have asked him to do. If it's carry it 25 times, it's carry it 25 times. If it's pass protect and carry it 10 times, he'll do it with a smile on his face and, and do it to the best of his ability. So uh, he, he just is excited to take advantage of every opportunity he gets to carry the ball. Uh, but the one thing I, I do see is he's just as excited to help and contribute to the team in any way that he can. Um, so that, that's always good to be around guys like that. Thank you, Tony. Teron. Yeah, Coach, you see a lot of uh, extra work being done by you and, and, and Derek, you know, in the passing game. Is that something he came to you to ask, you know, uh, to, to work on, or did you go to him? How, how did that develop? Uh, you know, it's one of the things where – uh, as at the end of each year, we, we kind of reevaluate ourselves uh, as coaches, players, the organization, everything. So one evaluation, you know, one of the things that I wanted to continue to work with him on and he wants to continue to work on it. Uh, it's one of the things is just the passing game. And then some of it, it's not necessarily working on the passing game. It's kind of um, one of the things that Coach Brable always stresses with us that we're always working. If we're on the field, we're working. And so okay. – opportunity, um, you know, during some of those special teams period where he's not uh, participating in whatever special teams unit is being called. It's, a, it's, it's also a way to make sure that we're getting some extra work, you know, getting some work in. Uh, and, you know, it's like playing basketball, right? You can always find the ball to go shoot. So you have no excuse not to, not to work on your game. And I, and I think it's, you know, the same way in football. We can pick up a football and throw it. You know, we may, may not be able to simulate – tackling and all that stuff, but we can throw and catch all we want. So it's kind of morphed into different areas each day that, you know, if there was something in practice that 
um, he didn't feel good about or I didn't feel good about, it's, it's an opportunity to work on that during that time. And then if you rewind back to Sunday, I think it was the first – before the first drive in the second quarter, he had a total of two, two yards on six carries. But then that drive, it, it switched to nine for 40-something. When that running game is, is going that way, you know, six carries, two yards, what is that conversation like with Derek? Is there any need to like, hey, we're just going to keep going and, and let's just keep doing what we're doing? Or how does that conversation go? Just do your job. You get yeah. the ball. When you get the ball, you make sure, make sure you, it starts when you come out of the huddle, make sure you align correctly. Know what you're looking at. Make sure your eyes are right. Be be disciplined uh, with your footwork, your tracks, and do what you're supposed to do. And and everyone else will do their jobs, and it'll come together. You know. So it's it's just do what you're supposed to be doing. You can't worry about anybody else or whatever else be going on. The only thing that you can control is doing your job. And and I just you know, that, if anything is said at all, it, it's just that. Do your job. Focus on doing what you're supposed to be doing and make sure you're in the right place at the right time when you're supposed to be there. Gotcha. Thank you. Terry. Coach, hey, sorry I got in a little late. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I personally don't worry about the carries, um, you know, because it's, it's football and Derek's going to do whatever the coaching staff asks and, uh, we're going to hopefully we're going to do whatever it takes to win the game, you know? So if it's him carrying the ball or him blocking or him standing, uh, hopefully not standing over the neck to me too long. Uh, but if he has to be out of the game for some reason, he has to be out of the game, whatever it takes to, to, to win. Uh, and Derek is completely bought into that. Um, and he understands that, you know, we have a team full of guys, capable guys all over you know, in every position that can affect the game in a positive way and help us to win. So he just wants to do his part. I just want him to do his part and um, help the team in whatever way that he can. Uh, What's he like when he's standing on the sideline next to you and you know he probably wants to go back in the ball game, but, you're, but he's been taken out to either, you know, to get a little bit of a breather during the course of a ball game? I missed the first part of that. I said, what is Derek like when he's next to you on the sideline and you know he wants to go back into a ball game when he's been taken out to get a breather in a series? He keeps looking at me like, when are you going to send me back in? <laughs> you know, to be honest, no. He, he, he does a great job also of, of watching, you know, uh, and seeing so that he talks to the – you know, the other guys that come out of the game, I know he and Dion did, did a great job communicating a lot last year when over the last couple of years. And then, you know, I saw him doing it with Jeremy and uh, Sonoris the other day on a couple of carries that they had. Uh, and, then, and then typically when he comes out, the first thing he asks me is, what did you see? Uh, what did you see is more important, you know? So we have that kind of communication. He's done a great job of communicating to me what he's seeing so that uh, we're on the same page as he's making his reads. Thanks. One last one and we'll get you out of here, Coach. Eric? Hey, Tony. Uh, sorry if you've been asked about your overall sort of evaluation of the run game. Um, you know, but we see defenses stacking the box against Eric. He's only averaging 3.6 yards per carry, and yet he's, you know, second in the league in rush. You know, I'm just curious with all those factors, what's your overall assessment of how the run, run game is working right now? Uh, I feel good about it. You know, we're on the right track. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to coach. And I mean, obviously we all want to be better, you know, as coaches and players. Uh, and so we'll continue striving to do that. We'll continue to work each day. Uh, each, each one of us as coaches and uh, players are, are looking to do our job better each and every day. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to work at it. And then, you know, as, as we go, as the season goes, um, We'll, we're always seeking to improve. So I think as long as we keep that mindset, um, a growth mindset, and trying to figure out how we can make things better, um, from whether it be schematically or personnel, we'll do that. And uh, the games will take care of itself.